We've got to think through who is the right person for this team. What qualities are you looking for? And there's a key question that helps you really figure this out. And so it comes down to this. When you're hiring and you're busy and your team is busy and you think, gosh, we need people who can do these things and and then do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And before you know it, you've created a very diffuse role. And you cannot hire for a diffuse role. A lot of business, small business owners will say, I just need to hire a mini me. No, you don't need to hire a mini you. You're doing everything and you think you're doing it really well, but you're not. There are some things that you're really good in. Those are your strengths. And there's other things you're not good in and you're doing a mediocre job. And so if you hire another person and stick them in another diffuse role, no matter how good they are, they're going to do a mediocre job at some of the things that you're asking them to do because it doesn't play to their strengths. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode here on the Strong by Design podcast. Hosting today, Coach Chris Wilson. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for joining the show. If it's a first time listening, um, we are so encouraged that you've found our show. Uh, maybe it was the little, the little cool icon that that, that you know caught your eye, or the the words "strong by design" were appealing to you, and you were looking for some strength in your life. Uh, in some area of your life, whether that's in body, mind, or spirit, um, whatever it is, we we tackle a lot of different topics and issues of the day on our podcast because living a life strong by design it really goes beyond the gym. Uh, it's certainly physical strength, but it's also mental strength and emotional strength, and and your what's your spiritual walk life uh, 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 like? And there's so many different areas of our life that overlap and it's hard to find balance it's great it's easy to be good at one thing and be really getting an f for or failing in another area of your life so we like to kind of cover everything to help people uh you know really level up in those areas where they maybe feel they're coming up short and so today's conversation uh I think will really help a lot of those entrepreneurs out there and those business leaders and those coaches uh, and mentors, people that are leading others. Uh, to, we're going to talk with a very special guest about how to surround yourself with A plus talent uh, in, your, uh, in your work life and creating that culture that you, that you long to have uh, wh- wherever it is that you're uh, you're, you're leading others, or if you're a business owner or a supervisor or a manager, I mean, we're all kind of capable of creating uh, that, that proper work environment or that work environment that we long to, to have that makes us excited to go to work every day. And so before we get into that, though, real quick, if you would hit five stars or leave us a review, we would absolutely love that for those longtime listeners of the show. If you haven't done that, I'm not going to make you feel sh- you know, shameful for it, but hey, come on, help us out. That's that's how we grow. It's how we become more visible. It's how people find us is by people talking about us and giving us some love. That's like giving us a thumbs up or something, right? So if you hit five stars, that really helps. Or if you think we're just kind of okay, give us four stars. I don't know. Uh, but leave us a review. Let us know what episode you've listened to in the past that you really enjoyed a particular guest that you love that you'd like us to have back on, uh, we will would love to do that. We take requests here. and uh, Or if you just kind of have a general remark about the show, what it means to you, and you've been listening for a while, and you like a particular host or topic, just let us know. We would love to hear from you. So thank you in advance for doing that. So our special guest today, Dr. Sabrina Starling, a lady that I uh, met a few months ago at a uh, uh, podcast movement out in Denver, Colorado. I was out there with Jared and we had a wonderful uh, time. Geez, a really great time and met some terrific, absolutely terrific people. And Dr. Sabrina was one of the people I met in one of the lectures 
and she approached me. Actually, her team member, I think, approached me first. I forget if it was you or your team member, and said, "Hey, that the, the podcast and the, the podcast shirt works, right? If you wear the podcast shirt, sometimes people ask questions about it. And sure enough, it was the shirt that did it. And uh, so here we are podcasting with her today. Uh, she's a, a business psychologist, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, she is an international best-selling author of a few books. Actually, it looks like multiple books because I fe- see a bunch over her shoulder. But uh, a couple in particular, How to Hire the Best and The Four-Week Vacation. She's the founder of TapThePotential.com and host of the Profit by Design podcast. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? She and her team uh, coach entrepreneurs to take their lives back from their businesses. Work supports life, as we know that, and not the other way around. They are on a mission to send, I thought this is very interesting, 10,000 entrepreneurs on a four-week vacation in 10 years. That's a, a great goal to have. Thing. God knows we all need a little bit more unplugging and vacation time in our lives, especially those people that are just working and chasing their tails. So, Dr. Sabrina, thank you so much for being on Strong by Design. Really wonderful to have you. Thank you, Chris. I'm excited to be here. I I love that Strong by Design has all these different perspectives to help us be strong. And so, like Chris said at the beginning, if you haven't left them a review, leave a review. That's how us podcasters, you know, that that adds fuel to our fire. So, that's exactly right. And and let's give your show some love. So, you're you're just a real quick tidbit before we kind of dig into some of the material. What's your podcast and, and uh, when where should people go listen? Yeah, so our, our podcast is Profit by Design. And so by design, obviously, is what caught our attention at Podcast Movement and why we struck up a conversation with you. We're all about being intentional in designing your business to be sustainably profitable and to support your life. So that's what we talk about on the Profit by Design podcast. And we're everywhere. We're on YouTube, Spotify, any podcast platform you'll find us. That's great. I like to do that sometimes at the head of the conversation because so oftentimes that information is is left until the end, and uh, and it can be missed. And so I'd like to you know give your pod since we're podcasting, let's give another podcast some love for those business leaders, entrepreneurs, and people really uh, that are maybe starving for some help in that business realm, because we, we all work in, in some line of, of, of business, right? And I know there's a lot of listeners out there and in our ever-changing world that are working from home and they're kind of doing their startups or their entrepreneurs and they're maybe brand new at it. And so they really need that guidance and that help and that feedback um, from people like yourself who can really lead the way for them. So that that's wonderful. Um, so they're we're in a phase right now where we are growing here at Critical Bench, and we've grown quite a bit actually just in the last year and a half or so. And this is a topic that we wanted, I wanted to do an episode on this, not uh, with, with the owner of the company, and it just hadn't happened yet. Like he's been so busy, and I've been busy enough with everything else that I'm doing where we just haven't gotten to this conversation yet specifically. And how great is it that it just worked out where you're the right guest for the same topic and we can really tackle this. And funny enough, a few years ago, we did an episode, actually it might have released, I'm trying to remember when it released, maybe it was almost two years ago. It The name of the episode was Top 10 Mistakes Candidates Make in the Interview Process. Oh, oh that's a good one. Oh my gosh. And that episode does great. It continues to get just hundreds of downloads on the regular, on a regular basis. Um, and people are intrigued by this, by the process of, uh, of, you know, of getting hired, getting fired, uh, business uh, culture in the workplace, things like this, hiring the the right talent, the, the right type of team players. So you're a perfect person to talk about this. Um, because building a team for an entrepreneur, uh, we, it, you can't do it all. And it, 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 I think that's one thing that entrepreneurs need to know is like you need to you need to bring on some other support members, right? Even if they're just it's part time work or whatever, and they're doing it virtually for you. 
Um, you have, you can't, you're not a one man show. Nobody is. They can be maybe for a little while, but it gets to be too much and you burn out. So you got to bring in other people that you trust that are good or good fit that are, that show up, that are passionate, you know, that, and, and, and loyal and all these things. But how do you get there? Yeah. Like it's a head scratch for people. Like what system do you follow? What, 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 what's the right way to do it? The wrong way to do it. How do you know when the person's the right person or when, when to get rid of them if they're the wrong person? So yeah, I, I'd love to, I, I know it's a kind of a lo- really great big question I've just asked you, but <laughs> how would you like to begin trying to answer it? <laughs> so I think I'll start with where I started with this because um, I, I, came at this, um, I was a psychologist by training and I got burnt out because we couldn't hire enough team members in the mental health center where I was working. And the reason I got burnt out is because very severely mentally ill people would leave my office and they would thank me for the session and they would say, thank you so much for listening. You've really helped me today. I can't wait till our next session. And I knew as soon as I sent them down the hall to schedule their next appointment, it could be four to six weeks before their next session. And that was like a, a jab in my heart. And I just I got to the point where I just couldn't take it. And, and I got very involved in learning what it takes to be a great place to work and recruiting um, in rural areas. So when I left that job due to burnout, I decided I was going to repurpose my skills as a psychologist and I was going to be a life coach. Well, I was in Wyoming I don't know if you've checked recently, but the demand for life coaching in Wyoming, not really great. And <laughs> <laughs> most of the clients who showed up were actually small business owners. And yes, they wanted help with work-life balance. And But as I dug into it, what I started realizing is they didn't have a work-life balance problem. They had a lack of good employees problem. And they wanted me to use my skills as a psychologist to take their warm body team members and coach them up to be a players. And it doesn't matter how good a coach you are, you cannot take people who are mildly motivated and disengaged and make them into A players. And so I would say to these business owners, you know, you're just going to have to let go of these warm bodies because no A player is going to want to work here with this company full of warm bodies. And time and again, I would hear the same reply. Well, Dr. Springer, you don't understand. We're a small business owner in a small town, in a rural area. We can't get good help. That's just the way it is. And that phrase, that's just the way it is, really started to stick in my head. And I became alarmed when I heard myself saying it. And I thought, oh, this is bad. And then... One morning, as you know, have you ever had that experience where you're asleep and you're transitioning from sleep to wakefulness and you'll have this bolt through the blue idea that solves a big problem that you've been dealing with? Well, I didn't yeah. have this bolt from the blue idea, but what I did have was this powerful question that was running through my head as I woke up. And it was, what if it's not true? What if it's not true that because we're small business owners in a small town in a rural area, we can't get good help? And that question really got me curious. It put me on a quest. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to see if I can find some small business owners who have A players on their teams. And I bet I could ask them what they did and they'd tell me. And, and then I could maybe write a paper or something with that information to help small business owners. And so I found some small business owners. And yes, they had some A players on their team. And when I asked them if I could interview them, they all would, they turned me down. And I said, I don't understand. Why don't you want to be interviewed? And I said, well, here's the deal. Yes, I have this one person or this these two people who are A players, but if I lost them, I have no idea what I did to get them. So I have no idea how I would replace them. I don't oh. have any expertise on this. When I hire, it's like shooting in the dark. I don't know what I'm going to get. Oh, my gosh. And they said, you know what, Dr. Sabrina, if you find a solution, please come back and tell me. I'd pay so much money for that. And I thought, Wow. This is something. And so I started looking for books because you know, I'm a book person. I like books. I thought there must be some books. There were no books back then to help small business owners with hiring. All the books were written for corporate America. 
And you, it required an HR department and, and multiple team members to execute. It's not something that a small business owner could do. And so what I did is I, I went back to some of those business owners. I said, I know you have no idea how these people came to be on your team. But would you just please tell me the story of how they came to be on your team? And they said, oh, sure, I can do that. So I started collecting these stories. And then one evening, I laid them out on my living room floor. And I started noticing there were themes and patterns. And where there's themes and patterns, there's a system. And that's how I came to write my very first book in the How to Hire the Best series. And it was written for rural business owners because I was going to solve their greatest hiring challenges. And the craziest thing was, as soon as that book was out, I started getting phone calls from business owners in Denver, New York, New Jersey, San Francisco. And they would all start off the conversation the same way. I'm not in a rural area but I have these problems. Do you think this will work for me too? And I said, you know what? I have no idea, but let's try it. Let's see. And sure enough, if it works in a rural area, it works exponentially better in a more populated area because you have more people. And so that's how I came to be helping business owners hire A players. And that was, you know, 17 years ago. And since then, I have listened because I've gotten to have business owners in my courses and I've listened to all the feedback and I've taken like, here's the pieces that work, here's the pieces that don't work. And so my latest book for the, entre- the How to Hire the Best, The Entrepreneur's Ultimate Guide to Attracting um, Top Performing Team Members is really like, it's just concise, like here's what you do. And so that's a long way to answer your question, but it really starts <laughs> with by design. And being intentional with the A player that you want to attract. So we've got to think through who is the right person for this team. What qualities are you looking for? And there's a key question that helps you really figure this out. And so it comes down to this. When you're hiring and you're busy and your team is busy and you think, gosh, we need people who can do these things and and then do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And before you know it, you've created a very diffuse role. And you cannot hire for a diffuse role. A lot of small business owners will say, I just need to hire a mini me. No, you don't need to hire a mini you. You're doing everything and you think you're doing it really well, but you're not. (laughs) There are some things that you're really good in. Those are your strengths. And there's other things you're not good in and you're doing a mediocre job. And so if you hire another person and stick them in another diffuse role, no matter how good they are, they're going to do a mediocre job at some of the things that you're asking them to do because it doesn't play to their strengths. So we need to get really clear when we're hiring, if the person that we're hiring for can only get one thing done for us in a given day or a given week, what is that one thing? What result are we looking for from them? And once we identify that result, the next question is, okay, well, what strengths are needed to deliver that result exceptionally well day in and day out. So now we're talking about personality strengths and we're getting to the character, the kind of the qualities of the person that you're looking for. And there's one more key to all of this beyond the personality strengths that you're looking for is who are you as a person and as a company? What are your core values? How do you do business? What's important to you? And we want to take those core values and turn them into immutable laws, and they become our number one filter in the hiring process. So an example of this is at Taft the Potential, we help business owners create great places to work. And we believe in taking care of our team. We believe in work supports life, treating people with respect. We brought on a client who wanted help with growing their team and their leadership. And a few weeks into their work with us, they revealed that they were doing some shady payroll practices. My team wanted to me, and I said, we can't, we cannot support them. We cannot serve them. This is not okay. They're not respecting their team. They're violating one of our immutable laws. And so we went back to them, explained our immutable law and the value conflict and said, we're sorry, we can't support you in this, but here, you need to talk to your accountant and you need to go talk to a lawyer. These are your, your people. Um, and, and so we have to, as, as small business owners, we have to establish what are our values? 
and ha- not aspirational values, not, you know, like, oh, I, we want to be this way. And a lot of leadership development is based on aspirational values mm. where, you know, we pick some beautiful values and we put them up on the wall and we say, we're going to be this way. But that's not really how it's done. And if you talk to the employees in the company, they'll say, oh, yeah, what are those values again? I have such a hard time remembering. Oh, my gosh. And when they can't remember them, it's because they're not lived every day, right? Oh, my gosh. This is such a topic. I'm so glad you went there, and I was hoping you were going to go there, and you went there even better than I anticipated because that is where it all begins. I remember it must have been about six or seven years ago, and Mike and I, the team was smaller then, and it was just the two of us here that day. And Mike and I were talking. We had more time back then to just kind of talk about stuff in the business. This is me and the owner of the company. And we're, we're longtime friends from high school. So we've been together for you know over 30 years. And so he trusts me and he knows I'm loyal and passionate and all these things. And um, so he, he'll confide in me and some stuff. And he's like, you know, it's been bugging me because we don't really have a true vision for the business. And I don't have any real principles. You know, what are my, what are the core values of this company? Yeah. And so we brought on a friend of ours who's a mentor to both of us, who we, who's great in business and just, uh, you know, he's like 15, 20 years our senior. So he's, we just respect him. He's, he's always full of wisdom. We said, if we bring in Dr. Ron, he will spend a day with us and we will know exactly like what our vision and mission and core values and all this is. It took a day and we developed it and we've used it ever since as our filter for all decision making in the company, hiring, firing, who we work with, who we have relationships with, all of those things. And all of our people must know what these core values are, and they are regularly quizzed and tested and discussed. And he gives bonuses out in in huddle meetings all the time for people to know what these core values are. And um, it's it's it, it's put out there when we hire. It's in the uh, the job uh, description. Yeah. What these core values are, and if you don't align with them from the onset, then you're not a good candidate to work here. Yeah, yeah. That's so. That's I, I just, one. I just love that you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I want to share because you guys got to bring bring someone in who helped you think this through, which is incredible, um, and that was yeah. so valuable. So I mean, talk about I, I talk about ten thousand dollar an hour activities. That is a ten thousand dollar an hour activity because you guys have used that to grow the business since then. It's tremendously valuable. Yes. And so I want to share a quick um, tip for your listeners who are wanting to identify what are their core values and turn them into the immutable laws of the company. And so first off, I want you to recognize that A players hang together and we are attracted to each other because of commonalities and core values. That's how relationships are built is we find people with similar core values. So when Caitlin and I were at Podcast Movement, and we saw your T-shirt that said "Strong by Design." We thought he—they're th- thinking by design. They're intentional in whatever they're doing. We don't know what they're doing, but we're curious about them because we saw a commonality. <laughs> and that's that's how this works. So to identify your core values, there's two simple questions. One is, what's made you proud lately? It could be in the business. It could be in your family. Anything that's made you proud, because that points to a core value. My, my youngest daughter has a lot of struggles academically, and we met with her teacher, and her teacher's going through, you know, she needs help with her multiplication and her spelling. She's like, yeah, we know, we know. And then at the end, she said, and she is the most caring, thoughtful kid on the playground. And I mean, my heart just went boom, like <laughs> it could have exploded. I was so proud of her. Because that's, we teach love. We teach to lead with love and take care of other people and look out for others. That's a core value. And so whatever makes you proud is a core value. Try to capture that value and put it in your own words. So like one of our immutable laws at Tap the Potential is lead with love. And use, look for the phrases that you say often. 
that will help you start to put these in real language. And the reason you want these in real language is because you'll use these phrases all the time in your day-to-day of doing business. And it's easier for your team members to remember them because it's real real things that you guys are saying all the time. But the other Hi. question that you can use to get at your core values is what's ticked you off lately? Because when we're angry and upset, it's a sign that one of our core values has been violated. So for those of you who are listening and you've been burned by bad hires in the past and you've had team members who've let you down, think about what they've done that's ticked you off and identify the core value that was violated and turn it into an immutable law. But don't turn it into a negative. So an example is no jerks allowed, which sounds great, right? But we're really speaking to what we don't want. Just turn that around and say, what do you want? Well, we at Tap the Potential, we want people who lead with love. <laughs> That's what we want, or people who choose a pot cho- who choose positivity over negativity. So always look for the positive spin on that immutable law and phrase it that way. And I have a toolkit. This is a free download with the How to Hire the Best book that walks you through how to start identifying your immutable laws and kind of figuring out what is that vision and what is that bigger picture that you're inviting your team members into, just like what you guys are talking about, how you've taken that and it's it's become what you've used for years in growing the culture. Um, and you can get our toolkit. There's no charge for it. Tapthepotential.com forward slash toolkit. That's fantastic. Thank you for that little extra bonus resource yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic uh, and, and super helpful to people because you need to you have a foundation you need to be grounded in something and it's such a it makes it such it's such a springboard for for business leaders and for entrepreneurs in in that hiring process to just put their message out there and it's to be clear with it and and there's no confusion there's no it's it's perfect the clarity there well, sure. um of, of of the direction you want to move in as a company and as a culture um, is is clearly iterated in those in those core values and stuff and 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 that's a wonderful thing to be able to lean on and rest on it's like you know we we all here have a very strong Christian faith and so I I mean my Bible sits right here I try to read it every day if I can if I can make time for it I, I try to do that but for us, it you know that's I'm grounded in that biblically, and not that I'm perfect by any means. I make mistakes every single day that don't align with the things I want to do and want to become. But at least I have that there for me as as a as a foundation. And businesses need that absolutely. Um, they need that, and and I love it um, because that if you do it right, right, Doctor Sabrina. I mean. It makes perfect sense to me. If you hire and you take your time in that process and you hire the right person, the right people, the culture kind of takes care of itself, doesn't it? Absolutely. Because you're hiring men and women of character and that culture that is is brewing and formulating is is based on that hard work that you put in at the, at the onset. Yeah. You know, a lot of small business owners will say, I don't think I have a culture in my company. And yes, you do. It it's, might be defined by your team members if you haven't put attention to your immutable laws. But your immutable laws, your core values are the seeds of the culture in your business. And it takes courage to put them out there and say, this is who we are. This is how we do business. But as soon as they're out there, you will find that some people are attracted to those immutable laws and they want to be a part of that. Yeah. And other people, yep. it's not for them. I, I, I've had people look at our immutable laws and say, no, you guys are not for me. I am okay with right. that, right? And, yep. and the beautiful thing is when you start attracting those A players with those similar immutable laws, they become protective of the culture. And yes. it no longer has to be the business owner who's confronting team members who are out of alignment with the immutable laws. The other team members will do it. Because it doesn't feel good to work with somebody who's violating those immutable laws. That's right. It's a hundred percent right. You do you you protect it because it's become 
it's very special to you and it mm-hmm. should be uh if it's the right culture it's something that as i said earlier if it listen we all have our bad days i'm human being i have my moments where you know i walk in a building but my mind is still at home or still i'm stressed out or i'm dealing with this or i'm dealing with that in my personal life or you know um but generally speaking i'm very happy at work i like to be in the building i enjoy the people that i work with very much i mean on on their their kind of second family hmm. um I'm with them as much, if not more, than my own family. Uh, I probably see them more than my own wife because she's so busy in her line of work. And and so to have that, to have those peers, to know I we can make the small talk here and there in the cracks of the day, and we're friends with each other, and we kind of do life together, and we all have kids at roughly same ages, and but we can still go into our offices and shut our doors and get our work done. But just being in an environment, knowing where you're supported and cared for and, and, and loved on a little bit is such a big deal. And if you don't have that, I think you really, I like people should not take that for granted. And I'm sure a lot of people don't. Um, but I think a lot of people are missing this. Um, Yeah. And there might be people listening that aren't, aren't true entrepreneurs or business leaders they're more just kind of like you know they feel like they're just cogs that just kind of show up and but they hate where they go to work every day yeah well then you need to find a place like what we're talking about you need to find a place that makes you jump through lots of hoops at the at the beginning and and then that's a work environment that's probably worth working in yes and you're speaking something i think is so important. We spend so much time at work. And if we're not happy in our work, it affects us overall. And it really brings down our health. It brings down our mental health. And so we all deserve to work in a great place. And I, as a psychologist in training, I had the privilege of working in a variety of settings that were run by psychologists and psychiatrists. And I got experiences in some great places to work and some awful places to work. And I really felt the difference. And I was baffled because I thought, you know what? If psychologists and psychiatrists who are trained in human well-being and mental health cannot get workplace culture right, what hope do the rest of us have, right? And, and so right. You, you des- everyone deserves to work in a place where you are safe and supported, You don't have to worry about being attacked, being belittled, being put down when you try something new. Somebody's going to get upset with you. You don't deserve to work in a place like that. You deserve to work in a place where you feel safe and supported. And Chris, you hit on the camaraderie. That I hear that over and over from our team members at Tap the Potential. They we're a virtual team. We are we are all across the country. It's very rare. It's like once or twice a year that we all get to be in person. But they love coming to our Zoom calls because they know that we're going to ask them about their life, what's going on, how can we support them. That camaraderie is there, and that's so precious. And when we have that camaraderie, we will go the extra mile, right? Because you feel like you're a part of a team that's working together toward something great and important because there's a vision Right. And and so that feeling of I'm a part of something bigger than me, we all want that. And so for the business owners who are listening to this, that's what you need. You, you heard Chris say it, you need immutable laws, core values and a vision. You need a story. And the story that you want to create is not about you, the business owner, being the hero. And I know, you know, we all would like to be the heroes. No, the, sto- the story is about our clients and customers and their greatest challenges. And our team members, not us, our team members are the heroes in solving those greatest challenges and supporting our clients and customers. And when our team members can see their hero role that they step into every day, they're going to show up strong and powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
it it is it's it's kind of like the Luke Skywalker story, right? Yeah. Luke didn't know his greatness until Obi Wan <laughs> and Yoda were were there for him as their guide, as his guide. But he was the savior. He was the one. But he needed them, and the, and you're as the business owner, business leader. You're the Yoda. You're the Obi Wan. But you're not the you're not the magic maker. Right. You're the magic maker is your team. Yes. And 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 you're supposed to kind of be floating around in the behind the scenes and kind of, you know, helping them to hit that potential, to tap their potential, right? And to re- and to really really level up their their game. And that's what great leaders are able to do is get the very best out of the people that work for them. And the only way to do that is to show how much you care for them. And to respect them all, and to um, to engage with them regularly, and communicate regularly with them, and all those things. And even if you have a virtual team, you could still have a great culture. We have a, our team is split. We have several men and women in house, but we have a lot of men and women all over the country and all over the world, for that matter. I oversee our customer support department, and several of our agents are in the Philippines. And so I do biweekly uh, team calls with, and there's eight of us on this call. And I go around and we share, we talk about life. I ask them about what, you know, what's something great that you did this week. And I want to know these people. I don't want them to know that I care about them, but beyond the numbers and beyond how well they're help doing work in the help desk. And I think they feel that. And, you know, we send them packages with our shirts and, and, and stuff just to let them know that they're part of the team too. And some, a lot of them will wear the shirt just for the call. They'll like put on their strong by design or their critical bench shirt, because, you know, for them, it's, that's a meaningful thing to be part of that. And, um, and we all want to be part of something. (laughs) And, and I just think that. For me, that's the only way to do it. I've always been a team player, rah rah kind of guy, just from you know when I was younger, and that you know, of course, all that sports and all that stuff really just carried into how I conduct myself in the business place. So, Chris, I want to ask you a question, if it's okay. I'm going to turn the tables here. You can you can always ask me a question. I you know me, I'm a talker. <laughs> when we when we were coming on the call, you told me you guys hire A plus plus players. I would love to hear you talk about your definition of an A plus plus player. Yeah. That's a great question. Well, for us, A plus plus, and there's a lot of different competencies that we that we look at on our on our sheet when we're when we're kind of reviewing uh, the interview and the notes and all of these things. Uh, but it, we really, we look at our seven core values and the seven core values are uh, our positive attitude, integrity, gratitude, service, uh, passion, decisiveness, and faith. Faith is kind of the one that as long as they're not closed off to the fact that we're very open with the fact that we're Christian here, uh, then, and they're, they're okay with that. They don't have to be like, I have a church that they go to every week. They have to be okay with that one. But the other six in particular, they, we, they have to get, in our opinion, what we call an A plus plus mark or a, like a, if we scale it with numbers, it's a, usually a one to six, they would need to get sixes for every one of those main core values. And if they don't get a six, then they're not, they're not eligible for the position. So it's it's one thing to be okay. You know, it's one thing to get, you know, like a B on something or a C. And, and that sometimes you work really hard for that grade. But when it comes to character yeah, and when it comes to personality and when it comes to work ethic and some of these other things, you have to have some guiding principles that you will not deviate from. Like you, you like they either hit this mark or they're not an option for us. So for us, that A++ talent, because listen, the day they show up for the interview, that's the very best you're going to see them in terms of so true. they better show up on time. Yeah, They better look right. Like if they're not bringing their A game on day one, yeah, what do you think you're going to see day 173? 
right? Oh, so that's a mic that's drop our thing. Moment. We have, yeah, right. Like so, that for us, we. I mean, even the the, the owner, he put in place a a. He puts in place something that if we actually follow through with our interview process for somebody, a candidate who shows up one minute late, he himself has to, I forget what his penalty is. He has to send like a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars to like some awful thing that he does not want to support. I forget. Like he has something. Yeah. Or no, he has, I think that was his original thing that then he changed it to, he has to give every employee a thousand dollars. If, if he, right. So, I mean, we're, we have to set ourselves up. Let's, if they're a minute late on day, on the day of the interview, then they're going to always be late. They're going to be late all the time for anything. There, there can't be like show up a half an hour early or sit in your parking lot, you know, and twiddle your thumbs, listen to music and, and kill some time or something. But there's, there's certain things that you cannot, um, you you cannot deviate on or you cannot be lenient with and that's our a plus plus approach to to bring on team members i love that and you're you're actually touching on something that my team and i had an aha around recently and we were doing an employee review and for, on the immutable laws we rate you know one two three so we have a very simple rating system three is exceeding expectations two is meeting expectations and one is not meeting expectations and we had a team member who was getting twos on the immutable laws. And one of and my my um leader on our team said, you know what? Why would somebody be getting two on our immutable laws? They should be getting threes. Like it, they're they need to be exceeding expectations and really living this. And that was an aha moment for us that their engagement was slipping. And because they'd had threes previously and now it's coming down to twos. And so those A++ players have to exceed on those immutable laws, on those core values. I really believe that. And and that's okay to have that. And it doesn't mean, again, that we can't have moments throughout our work-life experience or our work experience where maybe our six becomes a five for sure. And then, but that's up to your your supervisor, your direct supervisor, or the owner or whoever is in charge running the show to pull you aside or to schedule time to, to meet and say, hey, listen, you know, I noticed something. Like you're doing all these, you know, you Oreo cook it, you do Oreo cookie it. You're doing all these things so very well. And, you know, so I give you high marks here, here, and here, but I've noticed some, is there anything going on? Yeah. That I, you know, and, and talk with them and commute and maybe there, most likely there is. And, and then you navigate that, those murky waters together and be like, I, cause I know what you're capable of uh-huh. and this is kind of just, just kind of, kind of recent. And so let's work together to kind of get you back to six there. Yeah. And, 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 and then you work at it, you know, it's not like you're like, oh, you're, you're off the team for it. It's just, you know, we're human beings and we, we will struggle and it's, and it's hard to keep all the plates spinning yeah. on, you know. At the same time, some right in life, right? We all, we all have ten, five to ten plates spinning above our heads, right? And we're trying to balance them and keep them spinning. And sometimes we drop one, or one starts slowing down, and we, you know, and and that's just the nature of being a husband and a father and a and a, and a coworker and a and a coach and all these different hats that I'm wearing in my life that you're wearing in your life, and um, and 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 you know, life can get the best of us. Every day is a new opportunity to show show up and get back to an A plus plus effort. I love when people have all these the the books there that displayed <laughs> behind over the shoulder there, uh-huh. I, and I know a few of them uh-huh. are yours. Are they all yours, or are those just some of your favorites mixed those in with the, also your mine books? and some of my favorites? So I've written the How to Hire okay. the Best okay. series and the Four Week Vacation, and the Four Week Vacation is all about taking your life back from your business because when you have a growing business, it's just going to take over your life, and you know hiring great team members is a part of that. Um, the other books behind me though are books that have had a profound effect on me and my business over the years, and they're tools that we use with our clients. So. One of them behind me is the pumpkin plan. And the pumpkin plan is all about identifying the sweet spot of your business. And this ties in right with what we're talking about here with the immutable laws, because 
we want to protect our teams from bad clients and customers. And so when we bring clients and customers into our businesses who violate our immutable laws, we're not taking care of our teams because we're allowing them to be mistreated. And so when we are identifying the sweet spot of our business, we're really looking at who are our top clients who value what we're doing the most and what is it that they appreciate the most about what we're doing for them and then the systems that we put in place around that. And what's interesting about this is that we as business owners and team members will say, you know, here's what we do for our clients. This is why they like us. We're, all, we're coming up with that out of our own head. And we're always wrong. And so we teach our clients that you want to interview your top clients and customers and hear what they're saying about what they appreciate about what you're doing. And for myself, an, an example is I used to go around talking about disengaged employees and helping you with your disengaged employees. When I did my top client interviews, no one ever used the word disengaged employees. They always talked about warm bodies. And one person, when I said, "What? how would you describe what I do? Because I was really having a trouble because I was not, I'm not a coach. I'm a psychologist, but I use coaching skills and I was really having trouble coming up with a label. And he said, oh, you're my business psychologist. And I thought, yeah, you're right. <laughs> And and so we need to listen to our top clients and customers and hear how they see us and the key phrases they use to describe what we're doing for them and what they appreciate most about what we're doing for them and use that as part of our branding strategy so that we attract more clients and customers like them. And it all comes down to the immutable laws. And when you create a great place to work, you have great team members and you have great clients and customers. And guess what? The team members like the clients and customers and the clients and customers like the team members. And it's because there's common immutable laws there. Yep. We had a live event uh, earlier in the year where we were uh, looking for some great new local talent uh, for our YouTube channel. Coaches who could come in and were well-spoken, had the right look and energy and could teach in videos. And we had great, a great uh, cast that showed up. We we broke it up into two segments, a morning and an afternoon segment. It had uh, about 15 different people show up over that course of the day. And we set it up American Idol so style, where we had, uh, I was one of the judges, there was other judges, and we rotated through actually some judges. And we made our big break room space like into a, a tryout area. It was wonderful, wonderfully done. We have a lot of good videos on our YouTube channel that show you, uh, that highlight the best people that came. And, but they, many of them said when they were in the building and interacting with, uh, some of our team members and some of our other coaches that were here just to be part of the day, they said, wow, I really, I love the, the energy in, in here. Like I love the, just there's a vibe. There was, it was palpable. And they, and, and we, I heard it from multiple people where they just, by entering the building, they could just feel it. Uh -huh. And, and, and that's, I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's on purpose. Uh -huh. Like, that's the way we do it around here. We want people to feel that way when they come in here. Like, something's different about these people, about this place. Yeah. There's something special going on here. Yeah. And if you can create that, in your workplace, you've arrived. And then you hold, like you said earlier, you hold on to that closely and let your, and, and your team members will fight to keep it. Yeah. And I, I want to bring this full circle with what you just said right there, because when I was sharing with you about the business owners that I was working with in Wyoming, who were telling me we can't get good people. As soon as I came up with the how to hire the best system from kind of piecing everything together that I was hearing from these business owners and I shared it with them, and I said, the first step is to identify what you want to create. Let's let's design this. What culture do you want? Who are the A players that you want? And I had them do that. And then they would go out and I didn't know what was going to happen because this was all new back then. I was experimenting, right? And within a week later, they would show up on these calls and they'd be like, I found my person. They were right under my nose the whole time. I was like, what are you kidding me? And they're like, no, really? You know, I found my person. 
And I started hearing that time and again. As soon as we'd identify what we're really trying to create and what we're looking for, we're putting that energy out there into the universe with clarity, number one. It's no longer muddled and, you know, hidden. It's clear. And we are also training our brains to look for the people who are like that. And we will see them That's around right. us. So I want to give That's hope great. to the business owners, the, the, the small business owners right. who's listening to you talk and think, boy, if I could create a culture like that, that just feels like such a heavy lift to do that. No, you can start by being intentional with what you want, name it, own it, and it's there. You just have to go for it. Wonderful. I love it. Such great advice. It's, uh, I think it's very helpful just all of the, there's many nuggets uh, in this conversation today for people and there probably some heads are spinning listening to all of this. Like, oof, you could feel overwhelmed. But as I always say with when it comes to exercise, just start small. Mm -hmm. Start small. Write your vision. Write your mission down. What are your core values? What are those five to maybe even 10 things, principles that you want to adopt as, as a person and in your business and work from that. That's your, that's your go-to, that's your sheet there. And then everyone's kind of tested against that. And you're looking for those A++ players and how they align with what those core values are. Uh, where should people go to, where should people go to get your books? Well, where, my where, books where can are they on see, see all your great books? Yeah, my books are on Amazon. Okay. Um, the website, tapthepotential.com, we have tons of resources there to support small business owners. The Profit by Design podcast, I teach regularly on the Profit by Design podcast, and I love getting into the how-to kind of teaching there. So if you know you thought this was really helpful today, there's tons more on the Profit by Design podcast. Oh, and we bring good. in real life business owners and we talk about these real issues and how they're grappling with these challenges too. So, and then of course, oh, there wow. is the How to Hire the Best Toolkit, which is available at tapthepotential.com forward slash toolkit. There you go. Wow. Amazing. Thank you for all these great resources and, and uh, people can, can go grab uh, your, go on Amazon grab books, How to Hire the Best, and The Four-Week Vacation by Dr. Sabrina Sterling. And uh, this has just been absolutely a wonderful conversation. Um, you, you, you nailed it. Uh, you were right on, you're so in line with everything we're doing here mm -hmm. at Critical Bench and the Strong by Design podcast. So it was a really uh, just a wonderful connection for us to make in Denver. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Me too. And, uh, I'm glad we connected. Uh, yeah, just to terrific. Uh, listeners, thank you so much for, again, listening to the Strong by Design podcast. Now's the time to share this episode with a friend or family member. Certainly, there's somebody in your life you know who could benefit from all the wonderful information that Dr. Sabrina had for you today. If you could hit that five stars, leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll be back next week on the Strong by Design podcast. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.